You're listening to the Astromami Daily Horoscope, a forecast that hopes to shine a light in the dark, helping us all see where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. Whether you're a first-time listener or a long-time subscriber, thanks for being here. I truly appreciate you being in the Astromami community. Without further ado, here is the Daily Horoscope. All right, good afternoon, everybody. So this is Astro Mommy here, and we're going to be doing a little bit of tea time with Astro Mommy. So grab a cup of coffee, grab a cup of tea, a cup of tea, and join me for a little astrology for the weekend. Okay, so first before we get into it, I have a couple of announcements to make. Um, so I will be changing my content creation uh, output starting very soon. I know that I talked to you guys about it a little bit a couple weeks ago that I was considering some changes and I have made some decisions. I don't want to start anything officially during eclipse season though, okay? <laughs> um, but what I am going to do is starting tomorrow or starting on Monday, we're going to be going from a daily forecast um, type of arrangement, how I've been posting Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, and Saturdays, and I've been posting about each day. We're going to bring that down to a more manageable weekly forecast. Now, one of the reasons that I've decided to do this is for my own astrological advancement. Um, when I first started Astro Mommy, I was wanting to develop my skills as an astrologer, and I really needed to track the transits every single day and look at all of the transits that were happening every day and really dive deeply into them and understand all the nuances of them and all that kind of good stuff. Now I feel like it's time to step back from the daily transit um, tracking and track the weekly transits so that I can actually give you guys a heads up of what to expect for that week. I feel like that is a more helpful, useful um, type of forecast, especially since um, it's hard for me to get ahead of the daily uh, post and and you know write for a few days in a, ahead of time you know on that day so this will be an easier way for me to give you guys a heads up of what's coming um, so starting this week we're going to be doing weekly forecasts I did this a couple of weeks ago and it worked out beautifully we did a weekly forecast plus a three card spread for the week you guys all loved it that is what I'm going to focus on for um, going forward from this point on. Um, and that's going to be for all subscription levels, for all tiers. Um, then after a little bit of time goes by with that, especially after eclipses, I do intend to bring back a daily check-in, sort of a daily transit check-in, but it's going to be with a, a tarot card. So we're going to pull a card for the day and I'm going to relate it back to the transits, which we've already talked about in the weekly forecast. And that'll be a really short, quick, um, you know, written post. I don't think that I'm going to do any audio for that post. I think I'm just going to check in with you guys, pull a card, do a little tarot reading, and I'll relate it back to the transits of that day and refer you back to the weekly post if you need a refresher on what those transits are. Um, and that's just going to be a written post. So the weekly forecast is going to come out on Mondays. That'll have a tarot reading for the week, and that will have audio available for the podcast. And then the daily check-ins are just going to be a written post that I produce every morning and that'll come out um, each morning the day of just sort of a card for the day and kind of a daily check-in um, and what I'm planning on doing is the weekly forecasts are going to be for all tier levels and the daily check-ins are going to be for my paid subscribers only so so if you're not a paid subscriber yet, then please take this opportunity to become one so that you don't miss the daily check-ins when they start. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make this weekly forecast available for all tiers so that everybody hears this announcement and I don't have to um, make this announcement again um, in a future post. All right, so those are my announcements. We're going to be changing some stuff up around here and making a little bit more, you know, making things a little bit more um, doable for me long term um yeah so i'm really happy that you guys are all here i really appreciate everybody's you know comments and emails replies and everything it's really fun to converse with you guys i love it so please 
keep replying to the emails leave comments if you like you know you can go and leave comments on any of my social medias um, and you can we can chat over there too so there's a link in the description for the social medias if you want to chat there all right so that's our check-ins now let's get into the weekend forecast so I'm gonna go ahead and minimize my screen here and we're gonna move it down out of the way of the chart okay now this is the real-time clock and so right now as I am filming this it is 4 7 p.m. Eastern time now I'm gonna go actually and animate this we're gonna actually back things up a little bit because the first transit that I want to talk about actually happened at 10 this morning all right so the first thing that happened on Saturday so this is probably the most important transit of the entire weekend is the Sun perfected his square to Pluto so the Sun in Libra at 27 degrees and 55 minutes perfected his square to Pluto at 27 degrees Capricorn 55 minutes all right so this is a really big transit of the year it happens two times every year and it signifies a crisis moment an emergency situation or a very transformative um, set of experiences or circumstances that really shift things for um, you know for people it could represent the death of a solar figure like a leader or a father figure or another solar figure type um, and that always would be a big transformation for somebody in their life uh, it could represent you know a big big changes in somebody's you know path their life path um, or changes in their career that really you know changes the direction of their career or whatnot um, it can also represent you know corruption coming to light things being illuminated that were in the dark before uh, and it could also represent you know near-death experiences or extreme acts of violence happening to um, you know a, a significant person or to you know somebody who is a solar figure or whatnot so it could be extreme on a more you know toned down level this could be just you know where you're making a decision for your life direction but it might have a long-lasting impact you know down the road so like for myself you know what I'm experiencing today where I have decided this actually relates to the moon's phase as well when we get into that we can talk about it but I'm making some decisions for the path of my Substack newsletter and so these are some changes and some transformations that are going to change things down the road this could also represent damage to possessions or the need for surgery for some so it's a very interesting transit it really depends on the houses that it falls in your own personal chart um, and how it activates things in your life so that is definitely um, we are still feeling the energy of that we are in the energy of that go back to the real-time clock and see where we're at so the Sun has now progressed to 28 degrees of Libra 10 minutes Pluto is still at the 27th degree of Capricorn 55 minutes um, all right so that transit is going to be felt we've been feeling the energy build up to that over the last few days and we're going to feel that into the first couple days of the week until the Sun really moves out of Libra and goes into Scorpio now later today um, tonight we have a couple of um, important transits that I just want to briefly touch on so tonight at 10 32 p.m. the moon is going to get involved with this whole Sun square Pluto thing so at 10 32 p.m. Eastern time so that's going to be 7 32 p.m. Pacific the moon is going to conjoin Pluto and um, getting and she's getting very very close to squaring the Sun herself so the moon conjunct Pluto is always a touchy time of the month um, people will call me crying and expressing lots of deep feelings and whatnot it is definitely a time when you know things get triggered deep emotions can come to the surface and so not only are we dealing with that and just sort of the need uh, to purge like deep feelings or you know get things out um, that we maybe have been stuffing down all month kind of a thing um, but the moon is going to be making her first quarter square to the Sun and that is happening just uh, one hour later at 11 30 
11.29 p.m., excuse me, Eastern Time, the moon is going to perfect her first quarter square to the sun. So this evening could be a very touchy um, evening. You know, if, if, if the sun square Pluto brings anything up this weekend, it's going to definitely get personal with the moon making the same connections to Pluto and a square to the sun. So this could represent something personally happening in your life that brings up a lot of emotions um, and that, you know, really changes the direction of your life in some way. Or it could represent something in the world at large that happens, a crisis, an emergency, or some, some sort of irrevocable change that really changes the outlook of the people in some way. Because the moon represents the common people and um, the uh, populace, you know, of a nation, right? So... Definitely, this is, a, this is a, a weekend where there could be a major turning point where things really start to shift. And the transits of Sunday also corroborate with that. So just to touch on the first quarter phase of the moon real briefly here, the first quarter phase of the moon, this is when the moon is going to be half full on the right. And so if I advance this chart, or actually let me take it back to sunset. So we're gonna go back here to about the sun is setting around six o'clock here. And so you can see the sun on the right side of the chart. This horizontal line that goes across the chart, chart wheel here is the horizon. So as the sun sets and goes below the horizon, the sky will get darker and the stars and the moon will appear. The moon's going to appear about half full, illuminated on the right at the top of the sky. And then as she sets, four hours later, that is when she's going to perfect her square to the sun, which will be under the horizon on the other side of the earth. And obviously we're looking at this from the, I've got the chart set to Washington DC. So this is the Northern hemisphere in the United States. So um, the first quarter phase of the moon is when the moon has finally reached that half full point. And it's, it represents a crisis point, a turning point in the lunar cycle for that uh, month. Now, what's also very interesting is that we just had a solar eclipse, which was a supercharged new moon in Libra. And now we are at, at that halfway point in between eclipses. And so this, this could be a very charged first quarter phase, and it could represent um, definite decisions and initiations and projects really starting to, you know, whatever intentions were set with the new moon or whatever fate was, you know, turned on, whatever karma was activated with the new moon in your own personal life, because the solar eclipse represents sort of new beginnings that we cannot control. They're out of our control. It's not intentions that we are setting. It's intentions that, you know, the fate of our destiny is you know, fate is unfolding before us. So whatever those new beginnings are, we're going to see sort of the beginning of, you know, the first steps, the first, you know, this, the first quarter phase is when, when the plant has really, you know, like if, if it, if the new moon is a seed <laughs> and then the crescent moon is just a little bit of green poking out of the ground, then this first quarter moon is those first two leaves coming up. They have pushed through they have made it through the germination and pushed through, and now they are fighting to be alive. They are going to send you know, energy into the roots so that they can anchor themselves, and they are going to send energy up into their little solar panels so that they can absorb as much solar energy and whatever so that they can do the whole photosynthesis, photosynthesis dance or whatever and get stronger and stronger and really individuate themselves from the seed from the earth and become who they are. So this is a very potent first quarter phase because it's in the middle of the eclipses and it's conjunct Pluto that just squared, <laughs> that just squared the sun. All right, now, um, also don't forget that Mercury just squared Pluto uh, yesterday also on Friday. And so that would have heralded an announcement. Um, you know, we, I definitely saw news reports about corruption and deception and things coming out that um, had previously been hidden and stuff like that, those types of archetypes. And so, you know, it was all over the news yesterday, different things. So um, that is all still fresh in our minds, right? And I believe that the next uh, 
the next transits of Sunday, which involve Mercury again, are going to herald more announcements, more news, more media, as well as more communications or more you know, messages in our own personal lives as well. So if we advance this just a teeny bit past midnight on Saturday, we get a beautiful transit between Venus and Jupiter. Venus and Jupiter will perfect their trine finally. They've been getting closer and closer, and now they perfect their trine. They're both at 12 degrees, six minutes of their respective signs. Venus is at Virgo, Venus is in Virgo, her fall, and Jupiter is in Taurus, and he's moving retrograde. So Jupiter and Venus in a trine is a beautiful, harmonious aspect that in general means blessings, abundance, joy, happiness, you know, romance, and you know, the good life and good things coming into your life. It could represent, you know, more affluence, it could represent, you know, beautiful interactions, it could represent more prosperity, um, it could represent, you know, more hopefulness. Um, there is a little bit of a caution though, because Venus is in her fall, and which is also Jupiter's detriment. Virgo is Venus's fall and the detriment of Jupiter. And so there's a little bit of Venus kind of feeling a little bit down, even in the face of this gift. Whatever the gift is that Jupiter is bringing, Venus is a little bit crabby about it anyway, or maybe overanalyzing it, or maybe really critical of you know the delivery method or whatnot. There is some sort of nitpicking going on, or maybe some sort of anxiety about the gift or whatever. Whatever blessing Jupiter is bestowing upon Venus, there is some sort of critical aspect going on um, with Venus's reply. And I think that that's interesting, but you know, so I would love to know how that works out in your life if you notice these archetypes working out in your life and there being some sort of gift given and the recipient not necessarily being as, you know, not necessarily accepting the gift in, a, in as gracious of a manner as they could. It's kind of like that. But it is a beautiful transit to end our Saturday night with if you are on the Pacific Coast, on the, on the West Coast, because that will be happening at 9.32 p.m. And if you're on the East Coast, it'll be happening at 12.32 a.m. on Sunday morning. All right, so then moving on through Sunday, um, the next little dance that I want to go over is really a 12-hour dance from 2 a.m. to 2 p.m we see this combination of transits. So first we have the sun is, I'm sorry, the first transit that we have is the moon is gonna square Mercury. So I'm just gonna advance the chart a couple hours here. So first the moon squares Mercury and we're gonna go actually to two, exactly 2 a.m. All right, so the moon is gonna square Mercury at 2 a.m. Eastern time. So that's gonna be about 11 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. And the moon is gonna be at 29 degrees Capricorn, 56 minutes, and Mercury is at 29 degrees Libra, 56 minutes. So they are both at the anoretic degrees. And this is a very intense degree in any of the signs because it's right before the planet shifts into the next sign. So it means that the pressure really starts to build. So there is a huge pressure between Mercury and the moon, and they're making a square there in the signs of Libra and Capricorn. It's almost like they are coming, they, they are arguing they are in a very heated debate and they are about to come to a resolution. And you see this resolution just a little bit after that, the moon moves into Aquarius six minutes later, moon moves into Aquarius, and then just a little bit after that, Mercury moves into Aquarius and they are still within square within this whole time. They're still within square, but there's a little bit of a like, uh, like getting over the hump. They are coming to an agreement. And this is also signified because as soon as Mercury goes into Scorpio, he forms a trine to Saturn and Pisces retrograde. And so this is, you know, they are, the moon and Mercury are arguing, they're fighting, they're debating, and it's, it's the, the, the energy is escalating, escalating, and you like, this is not gonna stop until somebody punches someone or somebody, you know, we just say, we've, we finally come to a resolution. And so then they finally do, they both change signs, Mercury trines Saturn, and it's like some sort of resolution has come has come from it. Case closed. We figured out what we're going to do next. And then it's like, boom. Then after that, the dominoes just fall. Boom, 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 boom. And it's really quick, um, 
you know, series of events that happens afterwards. Now, this is really, really interesting because after this happens, within a couple of hours, the moon is going to make a square. Well, it's not a couple of hours. It's several hours. Several hours later at 2 o'clock, um, 2.21 p.m. on Sunday Eastern time to be exact. So that's going to be 11.21 Pacific time on Sunday. The moon is going to square Mars. So the moon in Aqu Aquarius at 7 degrees is going to square Mars at 7 degrees of Scorpio. So the way that, the, what, what this makes me think is that Mercury and the moon are fighting. They're debating. Mercury's in Libra. The moon's in Capricorn. They're trying to figure out what is best for the long-term goals. Mercury is really trying to use all of his powers of persuasion and charisma and his powers of intellect and debating and, um, you know, really trying to, uh, you know, make things fair and just. And then they, and, but the, but the energy is escalating. It's building. They're at the 29th degree and you don't know what's going to happen. You're like, oh my God, you know, is this fight ever going to end? Is this case ever going to end? Is this, you know, argument ever going to end? And then boom, they both go into the next sign and Mercury trying Saturn case closed. Something has been resolved. They made a decision, but just a little bit after that, the moon squares Mars and everybody is batshit, you know, pissed off and crazy about it. And they like, you know, now everybody's upset. So what this makes me think, especially since the moon represents the people, is that Mercury, you know, is representing some sort of argument or debate. And then some sort of decision is made with Saturn. Saturn represents that, you know, authority figure. You know, it could represent the government. It could represent police. It could represent the father. It could represent some sort of authority figure. And, um... So it's like Mercury makes a decision with that authority figure and then the moon is pissed off and gets really mad. And so then the people are mad and then angry and, you know, you know, there's a lot of conflict and struggle and strife and the moon square Mars is just anger. It's just people being upset, people having short fuses. But the thing about it is, is that the moon is in Aquarius now before we were having, you know, the Mars and Libra squaring moons in Capricorn. There was a lot more debate, a lot more people trying to make sure that things were fair and just between everybody. Now the moon is in Aquarius and Mars is in Scorpio. Mars wants, you know, what he wants. He's determined. He's in his own sign. He wants war or he wants sex or he wants whatever, you know, he wants food. doesn't matter. Like Mars wants to get what he wants to get and he's driven and he's passionate and he's intense. And the moon is in Aquarius and she's like, well, you know, I really don't want to get into all these emotions about all this crap or whatever, you know. So I think I guess I'll just, you know, um, you know, I'll try to figure it out from a non-emotional place, you know. So there could be a lot of this type of interesting dynamic coming out on Sunday. And I think that that's, you know, probably the most interesting thing that's going on on Sunday after the Sun square Pluto. And then to finish off on Sunday night, the Moon is making a square to Jupiter, which I think is really interesting since Jupiter and Venus are still in a partile trine to each other. Venus has separated a bit. Uh, she is at 12 degrees 42 minutes of Virgo and Jupiter is now at 12 degrees 2 minutes of Taurus moving retrograde. But the Moon will make a square to Jupiter on Sunday night at 10.26 p.m. So I'll go ahead and advance the chart here. Okay, let's see. We'll advance the chart here to 10. So the moon is going to square Jupiter as soon as she hits 12 degrees there. Um, and so this is almost like, you know, the moon is saying, hey, you know, like, I, um, you know, I see what, I see what gifts you're bringing. I see what you're trying to bestow. And, you know, from a practical standpoint, I think that we can work with this. And so it's like the moon is accepting the gifts from Jupiter, even though it's a square, um, you know, squares to the benefics usually do end up being good things in the, in the end. They're usually not bad things, you know, subjectively or whatever. And so I feel like this is the moon using the power of intellect and practical, you know, practicality and rational thought and logic to say, oh, you know, I think this is actually a really good idea. Let's do this. And so there's some sort of dynamic with that going on. So um, it could be a very interesting weekend to say, you know, to say the least. And um, yeah, so that is your weekend forecast. And uh, now I'd like to go over the cards 
for the weekend. So I'm going to go ahead and put the screen. I'm going to go ahead and um, move the screen back in the middle here. And we will. learning how to use this program all right all right so we're going to go over the cards for the weekend now i already picked the cards for the weekend um, in the beginning of the week so i already have them here now um, i just pick out of my jar the three card spread that we're supposed to do you know just leave it up to chance so the three card spread that we're going to be doing for this weekend is thesis antithesis and synthesis so this is sort of like the idea the obstacle and then the outcome so the first card that we got for the thesis is my goal my glob reigns i think that's what this says here my glob reigns all right we are going to read what this little book says for that Ooh, it says slimy glob reigns perhaps you need to clean up your act this card has almost no redeeming features <laughs> okay so the situation is that there's things in our life that we need to clean up because the slimy glob is raining, which means like, you know, there's trash or there's garbage or there's debris in our life that is taking over or just creating a sense of overwhelm or creating a sense of, you know, like it's like when your room is really, really messy and it's creating this pigsty and then it's just sort of taking over your life and it's hard to get anything done. So that's the situation is that the slimy glob is raining and we need to clean up our act. All right, so the antithesis or the obstacle is uh, translation, excuse me, transmutation through union of opposites. Transmutation through union of opposites. All right, the little book says, tension when not resisted can be changed into positivity a higher state can be attained by mixing different and even opposing energies. Yin and yang, or positive and negative energies, can always be mingled as they are universally present. So maybe the, the obstacle here is mixing opposites. The obstacle is the union of opposites. Temperance, you know, how do we, um, how do we come from you know oh i just had like the you know creative people oftentimes their houses or their art studios or whatever it's a mess and it's hard for them to create in a very orderly you know space that where everything is put into its little compartment and everything's compartmentalized and organized there's a lot of creative people who like to who thrive amidst chaos and that is where they get their creative expressions or whatever they have a really messy desk or whatever you know uh, didn't um, Einstein have like a really really messy desk or something like that and there's some famous quote about like you know if a messy desk means there's a lot of stuff going on in your head then what does an empty desk mean <laughs> something like that and so maybe there is the obstacle is trying to figure out how to balance the mess that you know is sort of the fuel or inspiration for creativity and the need for um, the need for order and the need for cleanliness and the need for a clear head and a clear mind and how do you put those two together how do you express your creativity or what you have on the inside that you want to express on the outside how do you m mingle that or you know how do you make that unify with the things that are on the outside or your responsibilities you know that kind of a thing so i feel like um maybe that is the obstacle the obstacle is how do you combine all of the different parts of yourself into something that is cohesive that you actually feel like you can like you are you 
you know, okay. <laughs> Bear with me as this, as all of the uh, insights come. Okay. And then the last card, the synthesis, which is the outcome is let George do it. And I love this card because I feel like this card is just, it's just a, uh, give it up to faith, leave it up to faith. George is going to handle it. You know, don't worry. Everybody has their person and we've got George. <laughs> I just love that. All right, let George do it says, George likes to do things. It makes him happy that he is more competent and less lazy than 99.9% .9 of the rest of humankind. Relax and let your intuition guide you. George will do the rest. And so I feel like this is saying, don't worry. Okay, so there's mess, there's disorganization, there's stuff that needs to get done. There's slimy glob all around you raining. And you're trying to figure out how to incorporate all the things that you want to do and all the things that you want to achieve and all the parts of yourself that you want to unify together. You know, but sometimes we just need to relax and not think about how it's all going to get done and just let George do it. Just let our intuition guide us to the right thing and George will do the rest. And I also kind of feel like George is the universe, you know, or the creator or, you know, God, if you believe in God, you know, universe, creative force. Um, that's who George is. You know, we don't need to know everything. We just got to kind of like have, you know, faith that everything's going to work out and, um, and just try to stay positive, right? And I kind of feel like that is sort of what the Venus trying Jupiter is trying to help us see this weekend is stay positive. Craziness is happening all around us. There's really extreme crises that are taking place, especially in the world at large right now. It's just really extreme. And the energy is so uh, intense and you know, really, we can really feel the pressure of all of the intense energy and you know we can we can get all caught up in it we can get all caught up in the slimy glob right which seems to be ruling our world you know or we can just say you know what I'm just gonna stay positive I'm going to unify all of the opposites within myself I'm going to accept myself and my life for what it is and I'm going to do what I can and try to live a life, you know, from a place of love and a place of peace. And I'll let George deal with the rest. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this horoscope for the weekend. I'll see you guys on Monday for a weekly report. All right. Take care. Bye.